Hey folks and welcome to Car Stars' 10 Wild Facts about Michael's 82 Trans Am, aka Kit, and the 1982 TV series Knight Rider. Fact number one. There were approximately 20 different 1982 through 1984 Pontiac Trans Am slash Firebirds used to portray the Knight Industries 2000, aka Kit, over the four-year run of the show. The 82 Trans Am was the first of the third generation of Trans Ams, so this was a completely new and previously unseen body style for viewers, which added to the car's mystery factor for the show's debut. Throughout the series, there were several different special purpose versions of Kit, some were set up for high-speed handling, some for jump stunts, some for off-roading, a couple for close-up interior shots, and a few for autopilot driving scenes. Fact number two. Most of the kit cars were powered by their stock 305 V8 engines, only outputting around 150 horsepower. However, transmission-wise, the cars were upgraded to TH350 transmissions to better withstand the abuse of stunt driving for the show. Other modifications included line lock brake controls, chassis reinforcements, and locker rear ends for stunt driving purposes. Fact number three. The first three kit cars were actually built upon the very first production third generation Trans Ams to roll off the assembly line purchased directly from GM by Universal Studios. All Trans Ams at least had a few exterior modifications to portray the part of kit, including a black paint job, dark tinted taillight covers, an elongated pointy nose, and of course the Cylon style scanner bar. Unlike most replica cars that use modern energy efficient LEDs, the original scanner bar used eight transistor controlled 55 watt halogen bulbs with a red lens cover that radiated a significant amount of heat. Fact number four. But of course the most elaborate kit feature was the extensively modified custom interior with many switches and light effects, which were only done in full detail for a few of the cars. This complex control panel dashboard was portrayed as the command center for the whole car and of course the home of the interactive and rather sassy AI system voiced by Mr. William Daniels. There were some changes within the interior over the four seasons of the show as Kit accumulated more and more features. Probably the most notable dashboard change came mid-series when they switched to a large single monitor instead of the original smaller dual monitors. Fact number five. There were a number of methods used throughout the show to achieve the appearance of Kit's self-driving auto cruise feature. Early on in the series, the primary method was to actually disguise a stunt driver as the driver's seat itself. Around mid-series, George Barris implemented a sneakier method of using a low-profile passenger seat-driven approach to keep the stunt driver out of sight and allowing David to be in the car while it was actually being driven by the stunt driver on the passenger side. Another more basic gimmick used when the car was at distance was simply using darkly tinted windows so the car's interior wasn't visible at all, or occasionally the car would even be towed during a scene to achieve the desired effect. Fact number six. Out of the 20 or so kit cars built up for the show, only five are known to still exist today. Some of them were sacrificed capturing extreme stunts, However, most of them were crushed after the show ended due to a rather unusual arrangement between GM and Universal Studios. In 1983, a car transporter train derailed in California that had many GM vehicles on board. And although most of the Pontiacs survived in damage, GM essentially rode off all their cars involved in the incident. GM sold over a dozen surviving Firebirds from the derailment to Universal Studios for just one dollar each but under the condition that the cars must be destroyed after the show ended. Therefore, most of the original kit cars from the show were destroyed in order to honor this agreement, unfortunately. Fact number seven. Probably the most controversial and significant feature kit received in the show was Super Pursuit Mode, aka SPM, which the car essentially transformed into a landborne jet. With SPM engaged, Kit could achieve speeds in excess of 300 miles per hour and even take corners at speed as well, which honestly looked quite corny even to kids because they sped up the footage so much it became cartoon-like at times. Anyhow, to create this wild Super Pursuit Mode version of Kit, they once again called upon the creative mind of George Barris. He actually created two SPM cars for the last season of the show. One was essentially a prop car that actually had hydraulics installed that extended the components out for the close-up scenes, which are shown each time the SPM is activated. The other had all the extended out components attached as part of the bodywork itself, which was the drivable version of the car. Neither of the two Super Pursuit Mode kits exist anymore, as they were built upon a couple of the cars acquired from the derailed train, and had to be crushed after the show ended. Fact number eight. 
Another feature Kit received late in the series was a convertible mode. Although not quite as impressive as SPM, the convertible mode was still technically a transformation, which meant George Barris was tasked with customizing two more Firebirds for Universal. Much like was done for SPM, one of the cars was a towable prop car built to capture the transformation scene only, and the other was a static, always top-down drivable version. The prop version was one of the cars obtained from the derailment, so it was destroyed after the show ended. However, the drivable top-down version was actually one of George's cars, so that car still exists today and resides in the Orlando Auto Museum in Orlando, Florida. Fact number nine. David Hasselhoff actually had a kit replica car built for himself after the series ended. David sold his personal kit car fairly recently in 2021 on LiveAuctioneers.com for $300,000. Fact number 10. The authentic very first 1982 kit car built for the series still exists today in its mostly original form and now resides in the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, California. Well, there you have it, folks. Thanks for watching, and make sure to hit that subscribe button if you like what you saw here. You guys are all great. See you next time.